Hi, Mystery Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain an American science fiction film called The Time Machine. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The premise of the film is set in 1899. Dr. Alexander Hartdegan is an associate professor of applied mechanics and engineering at Columbia University. The movie starts as we see him working on a formula, so much invested that his friend and colleague, David Philby, has to remind him of his date with his girlfriend Emma at five. Hearing this, Alexander quickly picks his notes and rushes back to his house to get ready. On his way, he and David talk about all of Alex's proposals that the university has rejected. David suggests he make his proposals less radical for them, to make them useful for humans. At Alex's home, they are greeted by his housekeeper, Mrs. Watchett. They make Alex get into fancy new clothes and he leaves to meet Emma. He finally meets Emma, the two walk in the Central Park talking. Alex brings up his deteriorating health, and claims he will only be good again when she marries him. Emma, with teary eyes, accepts his proposal. After a little hassling through his pockets, he gives her a ring with her birthstone embedded in it. Emma is over the moon. However, a man suddenly approaches them and circles around. He asks them for their money, when Alex tries to retaliate, the mugger points his gun at him. Alex complies and gives the mugger his wallet and watch, but when he asks for Emma's ring, they deny it. The man then tries to snatch it from her, and shoots her dead while struggling. Alex holds her in his arms calling her name, while she takes her last breath and dies. He is beyond devastated as he hugs her limp corpse and cries in vain. The scene cuts to four years later. Alex is writing a formula on the board, researching something like he always does. He has still not been able to get over Emma's death, and has been busy with his work ever since. David and Mrs. Watchett are worried for him. That day when David comes to meet him, he notices something on the other side of the curtains and demands David to tell him what he is working on. David invites him for dinner in a week and offers to show him his invention then. A week goes by, and it is finally the day. Alex dresses himself up, for the first time since Emma's death. He then opens the curtains and we see a piece of huge machinery on the other side. It has many wheels and gears, in the middle, a chair is embedded. Alex sits on it and looks at Emma's picture on a locket. He slowly pulls down a lever, making a sphere shield around him. The machine then puts itself in motion. When Alex pulls down a final lever, the camera zooms into a pocket watch and we see its hand move in an anti-clockwise direction. As it turns out, the machine Alex is using is a time machine. He has put his blood and sweat into the machine, to go back to the day Emma died four years ago and save her. In the following scene, we see the future Alex in Central Park on the day of Emma's death. She sees him and runs towards him. Alex is stunned to see his precious love back. He kisses her in delight and runs her to the nearest chariot to take her away from the park. They get off the chariot in the middle of the city. Alex tells her to go to her home and stay there for the night. Assuming that the past Alex will come to Emma's home at night, he tells her to not be confused and just remember that he loves her. He leaves her by the side of the road to get her flowers as he promised. But then, a vehicle hits her, killing Emma again. Alex realizes that he cannot change Emma's fate and no matter what he does, she will die that night. But he doesn't give up. He believes that the people from the future have surely found a way to alter this factor, so he decides to go into the future and study futuristic time machines. He gets into the machine and pulls down the lever again, this time setting the time to 2030. As he travels through time, he sees the world around him changing. In 2030, he sees an advertisement for a settlement being established on the moon. He goes to the New York library, hoping to find a book on time travel where he meets a hologram of the librarian named Vox 114 and is stunned by the technology. However, when he talks about time travel, Vox 114 reveals that there hasn't been any invention of such sort. Thinking that he would have better luck a couple of years later, he gets into the machine again and now travels to the year 2037. In 2037, the world has been fully destroyed. The lunar habitation program has made the Earth inhabitable because the moon was pulled closer to it. The gravitational forces of the bodies change causing frequent earthquakes and tsunamis on Earth. The lunar habitation has caused a huge crack on the surface of the moon. Two policemen, who are evacuating the Earth, arrest Alex to take him to his evacuation center. As he resists them, the ground starts to shake and splits in half, spilling out hot lava. Alex quickly gets into his machine and drives away, but amidst the chaos, hits his head on a piece of metal, making him go unconscious. The time machine starts its journey, but an unconscious Alex isn't there to stop it. When he finally opens his eyes, he sees that he has reached the year 800-2701, and quickly stops the machine before falling unconscious again. He wakes up in a bed with his wounds healed. 
As he wears his clothes, a little boy approaches him and runs away. Alex follows the kid and sees that the future humans have reverted to a primitive lifestyle and live on cliffs. They all come to Alex and watch him in awe, but do not seem to understand English, except for a girl named Mara who can speak the language fluently. Alex tells her that he is a time traveler, but Mara tells the others he is just a wandering fool so that they won't kill him. Those people are called the Eloise. A loud honking is heard, and everyone goes into their shed. That night, he stays at Mara and her brother, Kalen's place. He sees the broken pieces of the moon in the sky. The following day, Mara takes Alex to his time machine. The two see that it has not been damaged. Mara insists Alex take Kalen with him to the past. Before Alex can ask why, loud honking is heard in the background. Mara freaks out and runs to save Kalen, as a confused Alex follows her. Everyone around them starts running back to the cliffs as well. Suddenly, Alex comes face to face with a beast life creature. They are called the Morlocks. More of them emerge from the ground and start attacking everyone. They tie the people they can get their hands in, and take them into the ground. Alex watches as one of them gets Mara and sinks with her into the soil. When all of them are gone, Alex tries asking the others where the Morlocks take them, but Kaelin tells him that when the Eloise are taken, they are not supposed to talk about it. Kaelin then takes Alex to the opening to the world of the Morlocks. They climb down into a cave and Alex realizes that it is the New York Library. The hologram of Vox 144 talks from behind them. Since the technology worked on solar power, he has survived all these years. Alex is beyond surprised, and asks him what is going on with the world now. Vox 114 replies that the human race has evolved into two, Eloise and Morlocks. This is the nature of the world now. The Morlocks come to the surface to hunt Eloise for survival. Vox then reveals that to reach the world of Morlocks, they should follow the breathing. Kaelin and Alex hear the noise and follow it to reach a massive statue of a demonic face whose mouth is an opening to Morlock's world. He leaves Kaelin outside and climbs down underground carefully. He finally reaches the place and sees a whole civilization there. He then sneaks into a room, and accidentally falls into a pond full of human remains. Alex is then found by a Morlock and sent into their leader's chamber. The leader explains, that when the moon dissociated, some people sank under the ground with nowhere else to go. Over the years, they evolved into flesh-eating Morlocks. Others miraculously survived on the surface and repopulated, the Eloise. The Morlocks tried to come back to the surface, but couldn't, because of the years of underground evolution. So they started to hunt the humans from the surface for food and breeding. The leader also reveals that he has the power to control both Eloise and Morlocks' minds, and controls the balance of the world through them. He has also read Alex's mind, and knows that he is a time traveler and his desire is to bring Emma back. He makes Alex hallucinate about his life if Emma hadn't died. He is filled with sadness, to see Emma and his kid playing. The leader then concludes that humans cannot change fate, because they are the results of their own actions. Then, he shows Alex the time machine that he had brought into the Morlock world. The leader wants him to go back to where he came from, and not harm the balance of the society now. Alex quietly obliges but as he starts the machine, he pulls the leader in with him. The two struggle for a while. Alex holds him outside the machine's sphere and starts it. The leader dies rapidly by aging. He again stops the machine in the future and sees the place is filled with Morlock's cave, suggesting that the place is now ruled by Morlocks. Alex then comes back to save Mara, and brings her out of the cage. The Morlocks get angry and leave to attack them, but Alex jams a gear in the machine, creating a massive distortion in time. The time machine explodes taking all of Morlock's world with it, but Mara and Alex manage to run out of the cave just in time. With his time machine gone, Alex decides to stay with Eloise as he has found satisfaction here. In the future, we see Vox 144 teaching Eloise children about the past of humans. Alex brings Mara and Kalen to the place, where his lab used to be. As he talks to them, somewhere in another time, David and Mrs. Watchett enter Alex's lab and discuss his disappearance. David claims that Alex is happy wherever he is, and offers Mrs. Watchett to come work as his housekeeper. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.